Welcome back to the Tractor Tech channel, I'm Roger. Lately I've been seeing a lot of people ask about what kind of trailer do I need to haul my Kubota BX series tractor on. This video is not really going to be Kubota BX series specific, it's going to apply to all subcompact tractors. We're going to look at a single axle, 3000 gross, 6 by 14 foot trailer, and then a two axle, 7000 gross, 16 foot car trailer today. When most people start looking at trailers for a subcompact tractor, they're probably going to look first at a single axle 3000 gross trailer. This trailer, as I already mentioned, is 6 foot 4 inches. It's sold as a 6 foot trailer. There are also 7 foot trailers on the market now. This one is 14 feet long. Your average trailer is going to be 12 feet long. A 14 foot trailer is pretty hard to find. A 12 foot trailer, in my opinion, is way too small to haul a subcompact tractor on. I have another video that I'm going to put on the end screen where I show what a subcompact tractor looks like in a 12 foot dump trailer. This trailer has an empty weight of 900 pounds. You can see I've added a toolbox and a winch mount to the front of it. The winch is in the toolbox and some accessories you need for a trailer are also stored in the toolbox. Then there's a spare tire on it. I'm going to say the combination of the spare tire, the winch, the winch mount, the box, that's all 100 pounds, maybe even a little bit more, just for round numbers, let's say 100 pounds. So now this trailer has an empty weight of 1,000 pounds. So that leaves us with 2,000 pounds of payload. Payload is how much you can haul. So we can haul 2,000 pounds on this trailer. A Kubota BX weighs 1,300 pounds just for the bare tractor. Now most people when they buy a Kubota BX, are not going to buy just a bare Kubota BX. They're at least going to get a mower deck. A mower deck is around 300 pounds. And on top of that, most people are probably going to get at least a loader with the tractor. A loader and a bucket is another 500 pounds. And then if you have fluid in your tires, the tires can hold, let's say 100 pounds per tire, depending what kind of fluid you get put in your tires. So in my case, the Kubota BX weighs 1,350 pounds. 100 pounds of fluid in each rear tire. We're now to 1550. I have just shy of 300 pounds of weight, weight bracket and grill guard on the front. So that's 1850. Then about a 70 pound quick hitch on the rear of the tractor. So now we are at 1920. The mower deck on this tractor is like 275, 300 pounds. So you can see we're already going to be exceeding the limits of this single axle trailer. We're going to be around 2200 pounds and that's no attachment on the rear, which if you're taking an attachment on the three-point hitch, you're probably not going to be taking the mower deck in a lot of cases, but in some cases you may be. Since I have this single axle trailer sitting here, let's see what the Kubota BX looks like on it for an idea of what a subcompact tractor looks like on a 14-foot trailer. But before I load it, I wanna show you one thing. You may not be able to see it too well, but this gate is actually bowed just a little bit on this trailer. So if you're looking for a landscape style trailer, this trailer has a gate that is made out of angle iron. There are heavier duty gates that are made out of box tubing, which would be better. And some of them even have little runners on them going crossways for extra strength for when you pull something heavy on the trailer. So let's see what the BX looks like on a 14 foot trailer now. One thing good about a landscape style trailer is the rear ramp is easy to put down. Just pull two pins and drop it down. So there is just a Kubota BX, of course, no loader, no attachment on the three-point hitch on a 14-foot trailer. Do you have the weight guard? If you didn't have that, you can see you have some room in the front and you have some room in the rear. But now you can imagine if you had a loader and the tractor is parked just like it is right now, the loader bucket is going to be very, very close to the front of the trailer, if not touching the front of the trailer. And then you're not going to have any room for an attachment. So if you need to take, well, you might be able to get a box blade, but if you need to take something like a scraper blade or a rotary cutter, it's not going to fit on a 14 foot trailer. So if you're considering a 3000 gross single axle trailer, 
I'd really crunch the numbers, see what the trailer weighs that you're considering buying. This trailer has an angle frame. I wouldn't go with an angle frame. I would find one that had a channel frame. That'd be a lot stronger for hauling this heavier weight, but the downside to a channel frame is it's going to make the trailer heavier, so you're going to have less payload. And then also figure up the weight of your tractor to see if the trailer that you're considering buying is going to have enough payload for hauling your tractor. Probably going to find out in most cases that a single axle trailer is not suitable for hauling a subcompact tractor. Let's go over and take a look at the 16 foot two axle trailer now. As I mentioned earlier, this trailer is a 7,000 gross weight. It is seven feet wide by 16 feet long. It's considered a car trailer. It has ramps that slide out from the back. There are other car trailers that have ramps that slide out from the side. I really don't care for that design because if you back in, let's say into an alley, you're going to have to unload your ramps before backing up. If not, you're not going to be able to get your ramps out. In my opinion, this trailer is a major upgrade from the single axle trailer that I just showed. It is so much more versatile. With a single axle trailer, you're really limited to what you can haul, just smaller, lighter things. With this trailer being a car trailer, you can haul a lot of cars or a lot of even lighter trucks on this trailer. And if you ever decide to get a larger tractor than a Kubota BX, this trailer may still be suitable for hauling that. This trailer would probably work pretty decent even for a smaller L series like an L3301 or something like that. If you're looking at a Grand L, you're going to need a larger trailer than this. This trailer weighs somewhere around 1,800 to 2,000 pounds. That gives me 5,000 to 5,200 pounds of payload capacity. This trailer also has brakes. A single axle trailer typically does not have brakes, so you're relying on the tow vehicle to do all the stopping, whereas the trailer brakes are going to help stop in this case. So I'll go ahead and slide the ramps out on this trailer and pull the BX on. Notice the ramps on this trailer are a lot more robust than the gate that was on the landscape trailer I showed. There are all landscape trailers with better gates than what that trailer has. The mm -hmm. thing I like about this style trailer with the ramps is they store underneath so you don't have a gate sticking up in the way in the back. So if you want to step up on the trailer, you can easily step up on the trailer from the rear. If you need to let something overhang, you can let it overhang. Whereas if you had a gate, you get a so let's see what the BX looks like on this 16 foot trailer. The BX looks really good on this trailer. We have plenty of room and since the BX only weighs 2200 pounds, we aren't even at half of our payload capacity closer look so you have plenty of room where you can pull forward or back up if necessary to get your tongue weight right. If there's more than enough room if you have a loader, more than enough room if you have a backhoe, and I believe a rotary cutter and a loader would fit on this trailer without overhanging or the tail wheel might just barely overhanging a trailer like this. You have plenty of room to haul any attachment that you may need. In some cases, you may be able to haul multiple attachments with a 16-foot trailer. I do really like these car trailers better than a landscape trailer for hauling a tractor like this. As I mentioned, we don't have a rear ramp in the way, and we also don't have side rails in the way, so if I need to reach down, hook my tie down into the front of the tractor, it's very easy to do. I don't have a side rail sticking up 8 to 12 inches in my way. So no matter what trailer you're looking at, let's talk about some options. First thing is fenders. This trailer has smooth steel fenders. I prefer diamond plate fenders. That way if you bump a chain or a tie down into the fender, it's gonna be a lot less prone to getting a dent. The diamond plate fenders are a lot stronger. You need to step on them with the diamond plate design. You're going to have better traction than a smooth steel fender, especially if it's wet. This thing is radial tires. Radial tires are going to ride smoother and run cooler and last longer than a bias ply tire and they even pull easier, so I highly recommend radial tires. Also, LED lights, instead of the incandescent lights like this trailer has, 
the LED lights are a lot less susceptible to corrosion since they are a sealed unit unlike your incandescent and they last a lot longer and they're brighter. Next thing that you need to get with any trailer you have is a spare tire. I believe it should be a law that if you're pulling a trailer that you should have a spare tire. You don't know how many times I've seen people have a flat tire pulling a trailer from a little 2000 gross single axle trailer on up to big goosenecks be sitting alongside the road on their cell phone or come walking in my driveway even looking for a spare tire and needing assistance. And if you're getting a two axle trailer, one thing that I highly recommend is to get brakes on both axles. There are some bargain brand trailers out there that will only have brakes on one axle. And as I mentioned earlier, I don't think you can ever have enough stopping power. Even though you're planning on hauling a little Kubota BX, it's great to just have brakes on all axles to have all the stopping power you can possibly have. I almost forgot about this option, but when you're looking at a trailer, I highly recommend a setback jack. You can see with this jack on this trailer that you can't let your tailgate down unless you turn the handle around. Now if the truck was turned or sitting down on a dip or something like that, or you had a newer truck like an F-150 that has a really tall tailgate, the tailgate would probably hit. So a setback jack on a trailer is a very good option to get. Next thing you need to check on on any trailer is be sure that it has plenty of tie downs. You can use D-rings like this or stake pockets are a great tie down and if you choose to use straps instead of chains with stake pockets you can get the stake pocket tie downs. <coughs> <coughs> but you can't ever have too many tie downs on a trailer. Please check out the end screen on this video because there are going to be other videos that I've done related to trailers including the BX and a 12 foot dump trailer so you can get an idea of what a BX looks like in a 12 foot dump trailer or just a 12 foot trailer in general. And then I also did a two part video series on what kind of trailer for hauling the tractor. But that was a generic video and whenever I look at purchasing something I like to think about versatility and I mentioned that a lot in the video and some people complain that well it's not about buying a tractor you're talking about hauling a car you're talking about hauling that this or that well if you buy a trailer like this that's a 14 foot trailer most cars aren't going to fit on it the 16 foot trailer you have plenty of room to get this BX on there plenty of room for implements if you decide to step up to a B or L series later on this trailer will probably still work for your needs thanks for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it